Hi folks, it has been a while, but we are back with another batch of your replays, and today I'm going to show you two replays from, that you guys have sent in in Swedish Tier 6 tanks, starting with the Sridsvagen M4257 Premium Medium Swedish tank, but um, I've been out of action, I've been down with the Australian flu, so thank you, thank you Australia, it's it's great. Um, so yeah, that, that nasty strain of flu that's been coming around turned my, you know, chest cold into to uh, slight pneumonia, came down with the flu, been in bed for weeks, um, and I'm just getting over it, but as you can probably hear, I'm still still husky, still have a bad chest, so Australia, yeah, not only are you content with giving us, you know, an entire continent that either wants to kill or eat you, uh, you're also exporting the flu now, so, so cheers. Thanks, th thanks a lot. Yeah, that was great. Um, but uh, as I say, I'm going to focus on the two tier six Swedish tanks, the premium tank, the Stolidsvagen M4257, which was one of three attempts to uh, keep the M42 relevant. Um, it was a tank that was proposed. It only existed on paper in the 1950s, um, basically to update the M42 and keep it relevant. So uh, they experimented by taking the Stolidsvagen M42, keeping the hull and just changing the turret and there were three different turreted versions um the premium version that you're going to see in this game and then the version that they decided to go for in the second game on the Stridswagen 74. In fact, in the game files, this tank isn't called the um, Stridswagen M4257, it's actually called the Stridswagen 74 uh, Alt 2, which is means that this is the Stridswagen 74 with the second turret, uh, which was based on the AMX-13's turret, but it only existed on paper, so I'm probably going to do a review for this tank over the next couple of days, but um, yeah, just touch wood. Um, but anyway, we are here with I'm Harold from the Legacy Clan, and he is top tier on a nice uh, game on Mountain Pass. Now, uh, what's the major difference between the, uh, basically if I'm saying it's just the same turret, are there any major differences between the premium tier 6 and the regular tier 6 in game? Well, yeah, there are some differences, but they're not major, which basically makes the Stidswagen M4257 quite a good little premium tank, but we're going to cover that in the in the, uh, in the review. Um, what you can see compared to the regular tank in game is it gets, it gets a slight DPM hit, and quite, a, quite actually it looks like quite a big DPM hit, but um, it's an autoloader, and autoloaders tend not to have the same DPM as regular single-shot guns in game, so the Stidswagen 74 gets a big, big boost when it comes to DPM. It gets a faster rate of fire faster reload um, obviously because it's a, a single shot gun but as you can see otherwise penetration is the same the damage is the same the module damage is the same the um, calibers it's the same gun essentially shell velocity is quite good at 925 so you don't have to give too much lead to your targets uh, the uh, ammo capacity is a little bit of a hit so you get only 42 rounds compared to the 60 in the premium tank but um, you uh, also get uh, far less uh, potential damage with the Stridswagen 74 so um while you do suffer on DPM, you get more potential damage and essentially you know, as far as firepower goes, it looks pretty similar, except one's an autoloader and one isn't. However, when we come down to gun handling, you could see other major differences between the two tanks, and that the gun handling on the regular tank in game is a heck of a lot better than it is on the autoloader. That's not saying that the autoloader's gun is bad, I'm just saying that the regular tank in game has a better version, single shot version of the gun. So the aim time is worse, and that's going to affect you when you initially aim, but it's also going to affect your shots between, um, you know, with the shots between the clip. So, um, You've got a uh, you've got slight disadvantage regarding its soft gun stats. Shooting on the move is worse in the premium. Shooting while traversing your tank or during turret traverse is slightly worse. The uh, regular tanking game has that beaten, and you also get much 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 better gun depression. So because it's an auto loader, it suffers from the same problem as all the AMX 13s do, or most tanks with auto loaders, in that it only gets six degrees of gun depression, whereas the Stridswagen 74 gets an amazing 15 degrees of gun depression with its turret and its single shot gun. So you can see that basically the gun handling, the DPM, a lot better on the regular tank in game. However, the M4257 isn't terrible. Uh, when it comes to mobility, slight, slight improvements uh, better on the premium tank in that the premium tank has slightly better reverse speed, but other than that, same top speed and say, well, very, very similar reverse speed, but just, just edged out slightly by the M4257. However, the Stolidsvagen 74 gets much better engine power than the premium tank. It also gets a 
result gets better power to weight ratio. However, it's balanced out by the terrain resistance, which is slightly worse for the Sturgis Wagon 74. So while the Sturgis Wagon 74 will, you know, it'll probably climb hills a little bit better than the M4257 on flat ground because of this terrain resistance difference. It's, you know, the two tanks perform quite similarly to each other. Uh, you can also see that the Sturgis Wagon 74 gets a slight, slight uh, bonus when it comes to the turret traverse. Uh, so it gets better turret traverse. However, when you're traversing your tank, it, it's slightly worse. Once again, it's balanced out slightly by better ground resistance while turning your tank, but essentially what it comes down to is the Stridzaga 74 has better DPM, it has better gun handling, it's got the same top speed, it's got a better turret traverse speed, and it's got slightly worse hull traverse. Um, it's also got slightly worse turret armor, which we'll come to that. I'll probably talk about that during the review. So you can see that the hull is exactly the same, and this is exactly the same as it is on the tier 5 because it's the same tank, the Stridzaga like an M42. Um, so basically it gets slightly less turret armor, but neither neither of these tanks have turret armor. In fact, neither of these tanks have armor at all, considering they're tier 6s, and there are very, very, very few tier 6s that ha are going to have problems penning a Swedish tank, or at least either of these Swedish tanks. There's also a small difference regarding the view range, in that the regular tank in game gets 10 meters better view range, um, which is a little bit disappointing for the premium tank, but um, yeah, they, they are essentially, it's amazing how different, or what a difference just a different gun, the autoloader and the regular gun make on the tanks because um, they do play quite similarly, but um, they both have different strengths and weaknesses. The Stridzak 74 is a support tank that specializes in going hull down, using terrain to its advantage, sniping from medium to long distance. It's got no armor. You don't want to play it on the front line. You're going to, it doesn't forgive mistakes. So uh, you're going to be playing it a lot more passively and using its gun depression. Whereas the Stridzwagen M4257 is exactly the same. You don't want to play it on the front line. And you don't want to play it aggressively unless you're top tier and even then pretty much every tank on the enemy team is going to be able to pen you it doesn't forgive mistakes but because it only gets six degrees of gun depression you can't use terrain you can't use hills you can't go down all down very easily behind it to use its gun depression so you've kind of get, got to wait with the Studswagen m4257 wait for those opportunities to pop out use your mobility flank enemy tanks and then just unload your autoloader into them so two very very different play styles even though basically it's the same tank with a slightly different turret and a, you know, uh, an autoloader versus a single shot gun. But um, anyway, we've got both of these tanks in game and we're just gonna go. So as I mentioned, we're here with I'm Harold on Mountain Pass. And uh, we're gonna see where he goes. You can see that the acceleration on the Stridswagen 74 and the Stridswagen M4257, neither of them are, are pretty good. They're, you know, you wouldn't classify them as good. Um, they're average, they'll get you around the map, they'll get your gun into position to put shots on enemy tanks, but you know, you wouldn't wouldn't classify the mobility of the tier six medium tanks as good, or Swedish medium tanks as good. Um, so anyway, uh, Harold is going to be moving down. How's my mini map looking? My mini map, there we go. It looks as if Harold is going to be coming over here, maybe to the uh, H3 area put down some fire here. You've got medium tanks crossing the valley. Harold's keeping his turret face towards enemy tanks. That's fine. And he's going to be playing on the front line. Now he is top tier, but it's not as if there are going to be a lot of tier fours on the enemy team. Uh, they've already lost the MT-25. They're top tier scout, so well done. Um, yeah, but... Uh, it's all tier 5s, all tier 6s. Now this is a little bit dangerous. You can see the problem with this, the premium tank, and that you've got only 6 degrees of gun depression. You've got to expose a lot of your tank here, and Harold is playing, you know, living life dangerously here. He did keep the rock, or as much of the rock as he could, between tanks that could have been camping enemy spawn, but he had to expose a lot of his tank to get shots up. He's managed to put in 3 shots, he's done 368 damage, he's gone for a reload. Now the reload is quite quick on this tank, it's only about 15 seconds, and also you do 6 100 damage per clip, so you get 150 alpha, you get 4 shots, so that's 600, 148 penetration is very good for a tier 6, and he's just going to be putting in a few more shots, so isn't able to uh, get the second shot in on the T14, crosses before being able to get another shot in, but more targets, side of a KB-1, no problems. Another shot in, he gets spotted and he automatically falls back and that's what I was saying. He was exposing a lot of his tank because of the lack of gun depression. He ends up getting shot from a Matilda Black Prince. Thankfully it was only a Black Prince, not a big gun, only a six pounder. So he doesn't take that much damage, 72. But he's keeping an eye on the minimap and that's what I like. He keeps an eye on the minimap. He notices there's only a Panzer 3-4 around this corner and he's changing his angle of attack. So a lot of enemy tanks have come down the 8-9 lines, a lot of enemy tanks in the middle, KB-2. 
heavy tanks on the six and seven lines so there can't be very much left over here so i like what he does there he waits for the cheeto to fire starts putting shots in that's one two three is he gonna get another one in he is and that is a very very handy what was that that was roughly about 600 damage on the cheeto so um that's what this gun can do he waited waited for the cheeto to fire he moves out goes for a reload while he's relocating and uh, he's just moving up he's looking for tanks where he can basically unload now again this is a dangerous approach he should be where the uh, panzer t25 is because enemy tanks sitting up on the ridge in uh, b2 could easily hit him but um, don't know if there's anyone up there but he decides to go for them until there's the su-85 yeah he only has a time to unload three of his four shots and he's getting shot by the su-85 very very dangerous tank very very good camo rating on that tank as you can see he wasn't spotted su-85 is some of the best camo rating in the game um but uh he's just lost a lot of his health and that was because he approached from the wrong side he approached in the open type 58's about to make the same mistake but um oh rush that shot you can see the aim time is not great but uh finishes them all for kill number two there's the su-85 going to work on the type 58 who's taking damage and he's on a reload maybe had a bad time to take a reload he had a shot left in his clip but um he should be hidden he's using bushes here uh, one shot in and someone else takes him out. Oh, this is dangerous. Okay, type 58. Oh, lucky shot. Lucky shot on the move there. Reticule was fully, fully exposed. He got one shot in, puts another shot in and another one. Now he's on a reload. Now he's crossing. This is dangerous, but he has to do it because this type 58 is going to put a shot in. There was no cover where he was from the type 58. So uh, he's down to 49 health. He's got two kills. He's up to 2,300 damage. And he's just looking at the mini-map, at least I would be. Lots of tanks rolling down towards enemy spawn. He's moving up to the KV-2. He's only on 49 health. And how many times do you see players just driving out in front of enemy tanks? Watch what he does here. This is, again, something I like. He's keeping an eye on the mini-map, but he needs to deal with this KV-2. He can't afford to take a hit. The T-25 can't afford to take a hit. He's using his third-person view to keep an eye on the KV-2, just to see whether or not the KV-2 fires... Yep, he's keeping an eye on the KB-2, waiting for the KB-2 to fire. No one wants to poke this corner. So sometimes someone is going to flinch. Someone is going to have to flinch. Oh, T-25 gets shots in. KB-2 looks almost as if he's AFK. Is he just waiting? Yep, he's just taking this damage, waiting for a shot. Okay, there's the KB-2. Takes out the Type 58, unfortunately. And that means he can move forward. He didn't throw away his tank. One shot, two shots, three shots. And four shots, finishing off the KV-2 for kill number three, takes him up to almost 3k damage. Again, keeping an eye on the minimap, he's not going for spawn. Enemy tanks in his own spawn, and he's relocating. Now, as I say, the mobility of this tank is not amazing. It really isn't, but it's good enough to get around. I might have gone bridge. Maybe, maybe I would have gone bridge to try and get back to spawn, but he's not going into cap. He could go into cap and get an easy win, but I think he's going for kills. I think he's going for damage. He's moving back. Plenty of tanks have come back to defend. There's a VK-3001D and a VKV-2 back there, but neither on, you know, particularly a lot of health. Doesn't look as if the enemy tanks are on a lot of health either, and you can see the tanks struggling, losing a lot of speed as it goes uphill. But, as I say, the mobility, not amazing, but it's good enough to get you around the map, and it's a good thing that Harold did come back because the KV-2 has just gone down, and KV-1, oh, this is dangerous. KV-1 ignores him. He takes out the KV-1, still has three shots, and it's always a question of do you reload or do you keep the shots in the clip? He switched to premium ammunition because he's, a, as I say, a one-hit kill. But uh, enemy tanks go down. The Panzer SFL uh, 4C has gone down. And now it's just Harold in a hunt for the final enemy tank, which is the enemy RT, the Gorilla. So he isn't in enemy spawn, otherwise the Panzer T-25 would have spotted him. And I think Harold is saying, yeah, please no cap. He wants to try and kill the enemy RT. And it doesn't look as if the enemy RT has come this direction. So is he on ice? Oh, this is so dangerous when you're only on 49 health. But he's going for it. He's going for it. Is he going to do it? Oh, no snapshot. No fail. Well done. Okay, so um, Panzer T-25 is still capping. Harold's got 18 seconds, 16 seconds left to try and kill enemy RT. And the Grilla has not been spotted, so there's a good chance that he's up here on the ice road. Harold's moving up, but time is running out. Only six seconds, only five seconds, and look at that. Blind shot by the enemy Grilla. 
blind shot takes out the Panzer T-25. That gives Harold time to advance up the ice road. And in order to kill the Panzer T-25, the uh, gorilla has to be around this corner, and he is. One shot on the move. And pauses just to aim a little bit more carefully. Finishes up with five kills, but you can see how devastating this autoloader can be. You can put in 600 damage very, very quickly. Um, it's not the best with regards its gun depression. It's not the best as regards its aim time when you're shooting and sniping at distance. But this is another support tank that were maybe... It's best just to play passively at the beginning of games and then keep an eye on the minimap and then maybe go into a more aggressive role when you see where enemy tanks are based. But um, decent game. Really, really nice game. 3,000 damage there from Harry. Harold. So Harold picked up an ace for that game along with his first mark of excellence for his Swedish uh, M4, or, uh, M4257 Alt A2. Confederate high caliber, decent uh, game, finished up with 1405, nice XP total, 3000 damage. Now what's impressive about 3000 damage in this game or almost 3.2k damage is that Harold was top tier and usually when you get into mid tier to low tier battles there isn't a lot of hit points on the you know enemy team. Tanks don't have that many hit points so 3000 in a tier 6 is far far more impressive than 3000 damage in a tier 8 um, so this tank is capable of doing it uh, 5 kills as I say nice uh, XP total uh, he finished up with 40,000 credits he did have to fire a couple of premium ammo clips and that cut into his cost margins his ammo supply cost so um, didn't make quite as much as he could have but uh, 73,000 overall ended up with 40,000 profit first game of the day left him on f almost 5,000 XP so you can see 27 shots fired 24 hits, 24 pens. So the penetration, even on the standard ammo, is good enough. Uh, you don't really need that much premium ammunition unless you're getting into a lot of tier 8 games. Um, the accuracy was okay. Harold did let his gun aim in fully when he needed to fire at distance, and when he didn't need to fire at distance, he basically unloaded at short range. So he was in very, very little, or very, very little chance of him actually missing shots. Um, so 11 damage, 5 destroyed, 499 assistance damage, and he did a lot, quite a distance, traveled quite a distance went to enemy cap came back went to his own cap and then went back around to the ice road so um yeah it wasn't as if he was sitting there and playing passively so uh, good game harold thank you for sending the replay in as i say i was very very short off footage because i've been out of the game for quite some time so uh thank you much appreciated for sending that one in Next up we've got Capitan Jagata. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and he's in his Stridswagen MR74. Now this tank is technically known as the Stridswagen 74 Alt A1, because the premium tank we previously had is technically the Stridswagen 74 Alt A2. So essentially it's the same tank with a different turret, same gun except it's single shot, not auto loader. Um, and he's going to be playing this tank to its strengths. He's going to be using its 15 degrees of gun depression. He's going to be using it as a support tank. He's going to wait for his moment. Um, he's not going to play aggressively. He's not going to be on the front line. He's here as a tier seven in a, or he's as tier six in a tier seven game. He's moved up and he's just waiting for targets of opportunity. So he's keeping an eye on the minimap. Gonna try and support maybe the, um, what is it, the zero line. And um, you're gonna see this gun. Now this is a gun that basically has the same penetration, same alpha, same shell velocity as the previous tank, but um, you can see that the aim time is a heck of a lot better. The gun handling is a lot better. Barely had to aim that time to get a shot onto the Panzer T-25. Just waiting for opportunities. Side of the, uh, oh, side of the uh, <laughs> Sherman Jumbo there. Nice shot. Oh, what what a wonderful 494 damage there with the ammo rack. But uh, going to, da still doing damage here. I'm lucky just to track the T-67. You can see the rate of fire. You can see that the tank is far more accurate, far better aim time. He gets spotted, shot in the move as he's reversing because the gun handling is so much better. But you can see that he's not hanging around. This is a tank that has no armor. It's only got 20 millimeters of turret armor. It may have 15 degrees of gun depression, but when you get spotted, you are going to take damage if enemy tanks are shooting at you. Uh, as long as they can hit you, of course. But um, he's moving up again, and now look, look at him on the move. He's going to be trying to do some flanking. Now there's a T-71, um, that's the autoloader, the DA is the autoloader I believe, who was last spotted in the middle here, and Capitan is just moving forward, he's going to try and find this T-71, he does, the T-71 is on rather, rather, rather low health, but it's autoloader versus autoloader, 
Or no, not auto loader versus auto loader. It's auto loader versus single shot. He manages to somehow bounce a shot, but he takes a big, big hit. So, you know, this is what I'm saying. These Swedish tier sixes, they aren't built for head to head combat. They aren't built for playing aggressively on the front line. Captain uh, Captain Jagada, he missed, he lost out on almost 500 health there. Just one one little engagement with a T-71 and he loses 500 health. He does take out the T-71 and he does take out RT, but you got a question whether that was worth it. Was it worth it losing, you know, over half your health or most of your health dealing with a, um, dealing with a light tank that had already been down or down to 300 health, but... Um, Okay, looks as if the Churchill could be AFK. Don't know here, but again, you can see the gun depression here. He's just trying to get an outline here. He's just putting shots into this Churchill. Definitely looks like the Churchill's gone AFK. But that takes uh, Captain Yagata, believe it or not, up to five kills already. And he still sees more opportunities for flanking. Now, this is one advantage that the Street Dragon 74 has over the premium tank, is it's probably slightly better going uphill. So, uh, Artie's on the move. Is he going to pre-aim? He is. One shot. Okay, takes him out. So, that is a beautiful shot there. Takes him out. That's kill number six. That's his top gun. And he's still, still flanking. He's got 303 health. Um, so, yeah, he played passively when he needed to. And then he decided to get aggressive when the map opened up, where he saw where enemy tanks were. KV-1's now down to a one-hit kill. Uh, side of the turret should be able to pen. Takes him out. Now, Captain Yagata switched to premium ammunition. He probably didn't need it, considering he's got the rear. He ends up taking a hit from the T-150. And, oh, that's taken him down to, once again, a one-hit kill. So you can see in both of these replays, these tanks do not... Oh, don't know what the AT-15A was doing there, but uh, these tanks do not have armor. If you play them aggressively, you're going to take hits, you're going to be damaged, you're going to die relatively quickly, but... Um, that isn't stopping Captain Yagada, he's up to uh, 8 kills now, he's up to 2,300 damage, and he's looking for kill number 9. So, um, two tanks, no, one tank left on the enemy team, a T-25-2, and he's just moving forward, I like what he's doing, he's moving forward so he can get within render range, he's within render range, and the T-25-2 has an outline, one shot in, and can he get the second one in? He can. You can see the rate of fire, the accuracy. This is a sniper, this is a support tank, but that doesn't mean that you can't play it aggressively when the map opens up. Um, you know, Captain Yagata did try and play aggressively and he lost a lot of health, but it paid off. He ended up picking up a lot of kills and yet another good replay. I think this one shows off, you know, the differences between the two tanks. The premium tank, even though technically it's the same tank and basically has an autoloader, it's about getting close to your enemies and unloading, waiting for your opportunity, unloading, doing 600 damage very, very quickly and trying to stay safe. This tank, Again, you play it a little bit passively at the beginning of games, but it's far better at medium to long range. It's got a better gun, better accuracy, better aim time, uh, and it's got decent penetration. Uh, but it doesn't mean you can't play it aggressively when the map opens up. But um, the mobility on either tank, not amazing. The armor, terrible. And that's why you have to play it a little bit more passively, at least at the start of games, and then get a little bit more aggressive. And that's what both players did in both replays today. So Captain Yagata had a very good game. He wasn't top tier. He picked up an ace for that game. He picked up a Pascucci's, a Radley Walters, a Lavish Leos medal. He picked up high caliber sniper and the automatic top gun. A very, very good result. Finished top on XP with 1447, 2612 done. So less damage than the first replay, but far more kills, nine kills. Um, so yeah, this was a very, very impressive replay. Um, and I do like the Struts back in 74. It's actually, I've actually kept it. I've kept that tank because I think it's very good at what it does. It's a little bit frustrating when your team collapses because the tank has very little armor, very little survivability, and its mobility is not amazing. It's just it's just about good enough to get you around. But um, when it gets into those opportunities to play the support role where you're sniping from medium to long range and then have the opportunity to do some flanking or be a little bit more aggressive when the enemy numbers have thinned out and you can flank, I think it's a very, very good tank. And that 15 degrees of gun depression is awesome. Um, but uh, he fired 20, hit 19, and penned 18. You could see the gun handling he most of his shots were medium range with a few long range shots and um, you can see the accuracy difference on the two tanks here you can see the aim time difference you can see the gun handling difference on these two tanks it wasn't a premium tank but he still earned a uh, profit of 20,000 credits with a premium account it wasn't his first game of the day so he finished up with 2,171 xp overall he spotted or he damaged 11 of the enemy team uh, killed nine of them and did almost 800 assistance damage so not as much distance covered uh, as in the first 
first game, but um, you could see you could see basically how both of these tanks can be played passively at the beginning, use them at distance, and then when the game opens up and when you keep an eye on the minimap, you could be a little bit more aggressive, uh, and then then the armor doesn't matter at quite as much of your hit points. You can use your hit points as armor, but. Um, play them passively then get a little bit more aggressively mid to late game um and uh, they're very very good tanks i i like both Swedish tier sixes, the premium and the regular tank in game so they're both still in my garage i want to thank captain yagada and i want to thank I'm Harold for sending those games in. Um, much appreciated. I was short of replays because I haven't been playing World of Tanks. I haven't been playing any games over the last month. Uh, and I'm still trying to get back up and running. But um, hopefully, hopefully I'm going to have a few more videos coming your way. I'm uh, also back to Subnautica. I've recorded some Subnautica footage. Um, so that's going to, you're going to be getting Subnautica on the channel again. Uh, you're going to be getting a review. And I've got another video that I'm going to be releasing maybe a little bit later if I have time to record it today. But um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh, and keep those replays coming in.